Chapter 16 England After the Conquest The English Language After William the Conqueror became King of England in 1066, the Normans poured into England and changed it forever. They changed the way the English lived. They changed the way the English built houses and farmed their land. And they even changed the way the English spoke. The English that you are hearing right now is a mix of several different languages. English is a a little bit like a greedy friend who keeps taking your toys. Imagine that your greedy friend sees your Play-Doh and decides that she wants it. After all, her Play-Doh is all brown and mixed up with other colors. So she takes your nice, clean, orange and green Play-Doh and mixes it in with her own Play-Doh. After a little while, you can't tell your Play-Doh apart. All of the Play-Doh has become hers. That's just the way the English language works. Whenever English speakers heard a useful word in another language, they would just take it and mix it in with all of their English words, and soon that word would be English. The very first English was the language spoken by the barbarian Angles and Saxons when they invaded England long ago. This old English was very different from modern English. It even used different letters. Here are a few lines of old English poetry for you to listen to. Tha wes on bergum, Beowulf schildinger, Leof leodkining, Langa thraga, Focum je freyr, Fador eller huef, Aldor of, Erda, These lines are from Beowulf, the story we heard earlier. These lines mean Beowulf was in the city of the Skildings. He was a beloved ruler, and he ruled for a long time, famous to all folk, since his father went away from the world. Old English sounds very strange to us, but we can recognize a few of its words. Did you hear the word was in the first line? It means was. The word longa means long, and feather means father. Man, house, sheep, dog, wood, field, work, drink, laughter, the, this, here, that. All of these English words, and many more, come from Old English. When the Anglo-Saxons came, speaking Old English, they drove the Celts away from England into Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and the language that the Celts spoke, the Celtic language, went with them. Today, this Celtic language is still spoken in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Here is a line of Welsh, the Celtic language spoken in Wales. As you'll hear, it's nothing like English. In e de cruad Ir oith iger, ir oith iger, gad adieu, adieu oith iger. This is a Welsh translation of the first line of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. These Celtic words probably do not sound familiar to you at all. The Angles and the Saxons spent very little time talking to the Celts, so English did not borrow very many words from Celtic. But English did borrow plenty of words from Latin and from Greek. Do you remember who came to England after the Anglo-Saxons? Augustine came, bringing Christianity with him. And when Christianity came to England, so did Latin and Greek words. The monks and priests who taught the Anglo-Saxons about Christianity also taught them Greek words like apostle, angel, and baptize. The Anglo-Saxons had no words for these Christian ideas, so they borrowed the Greek words for them straight from the New Testament. They borrowed even more Latin words. Old English took the Latin words for minister, nun, 
monk, gospel, sanctified, and dozens more, and made them English words. And old English borrowed Latin words that didn't have to do with the church, too. Fraternal means brotherly in English. The Latin word for brother is frater. Maternal means motherly. Can you guess what the Latin word for mother is? Mater. By now, English had words from at least three other languages in it. But then another invasion came, the Viking invasion. The Vikings brought plenty of words with them from Scandinavia. Most of these words are short, plain, simple words. Leg, skin, skull, angry, cut, crawl, die, and drown are all Scandinavian words. Angry, die, and drown sound like words that Vikings would use a lot. So are hungry, weak, egg, steak, and dirt, and the days of our week are named after Viking gods. Tyre, the warrior god, had Tuesday named after him. Odin, the king of the gods, is also called Woden. Wednesday is named after him. Friday is named after Odin's wife, Frigg. And Thursday is named after Thor, the short-tempered thunder god. When William the Conqueror and his noblemen settled in England, English went through the greatest change of all. Harold spoke English, but after he died, French-speaking kings ruled England for almost 300 years. French was spoken by all of the rich and important people in England, and by all of the educated people, doctors, lawyers, and scientists. Most of the common people went right on using English, but they borrowed French words from the Normans. And the Normans married English men and women, brought up English children, and began to speak English. Peace. Curtsy. Beef. Chair. Curtain. Garden. Castle. Judge. Jury. Honor. Courage. And rich are all French words borrowed from the Normans. English still borrows words from Latin, French, and other languages today. In the 20th century, English needed a word to describe something new. A movie that you could watch on your own television. Do you know what word we borrowed? Video, the Latin word for I see.